Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and a new video and in this video we're continuing the data structures and algorithms bootcamp. If you've been following the playlist you may see that now we are moving on to more complex data types and data structures. We are already close to finishing trees. We just need to do the trees questions video then we'll do some advanced tree data structures. But after that we know we'll also, the next thing we're going to do is heaps and then uh, hash maps, then dynamic programming and then graphs. So as we're moving on to these more complex topics, one fair question that I have got, gotten quite a lot in the comment section below is, Kunal, I was giving my QA round and uh, I was giving, let's say, sometimes you give uh, online coding contests, which used to happen previously, like Google Code Jam, Kickstart, Hacker Cup by Facebook or Meta. And the thing is that when these online QA rounds, sometimes what they do is, instead of an input, they give you a file that has all the inputs, maybe hundreds of lines or thousands of lines. Okay, and they ask you to run this file as your input and then whatever answer you get, you have to upload that answer in a file. So in short, the company will be like, this is a file, it has all the inputs. Uh, please run your algorithm or program on the inputs that we have provided you. Now this file can have thousands of inputs and generate an output file of the answers and give us that output file. That is something that many companies do. So people are like, Kunal, you have not taught us that, how to take large inputs of data. You know, and uh, similarly, when we talk about large input of data in your uh, core itself, there's one more question that people asked me, which was about uh, Kunal, our question is getting correct. Like we have the correct answer, but we are not able to format it correctly. Okay, so it requires a specific format, some specific decimal places or some specific, let's say you need to remove leading zeros, add leading zeros, remove white spaces, you know, just formatting stuff. So before we move on to the like more complex structures, I'm going to teach you how to format your data, how to work with large number of data. So I'll uh, teach you in this video, we'll talk about strings specifically formatting your data, large number of strings. I uh, will look at the string buffer class, a little bit different than the string builder class that we already taken a look at. And in the next video, we'll also take a look at uh, working with large numbers. So there's a very amazing class in Java that helps you working with the uh, large number of data. It's called the big integer class. So we'll see that in a separate video coming after this one. And uh, all the notes can be found in the description below links uh, to the code repository and uh, the assignments and everything can be found in the description below. Playlist is updated in order. And let's get started. Okay, so string buffer class, I'm going to tell you about what it is. I'm going to tell you all sorts of things. But uh, let me just create a repository, uh, a little file here. I'm going to call this large strings, large strings. Okay, no problem. The code can be found in the description below. You can check it out. Main. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. so You can see that looks good. So there's this uh, string buffer class. So I can just say string buffer buffer is equal to new string buffer. I'm going to close the console for now. Okay, simply I'll tell you what it is. I'll, I'll tell you how it works, but let me just show you some basic stuff and then we'll look into why we are doing these methods. What are the benefits? How it compares with string class? You have already covered string class. So append means you need to add it in, add something in. So I will just write, we make devs. We'll cover what it is and everything. Don't worry about it. Okay. And now I can just convert it into a string. I can say buffer dot two string. We have already covered the two string method in strings lecture. Then system dot out dot print ln my string. Okay, this would be string buffer. Let's just have good naming conventions, and it looks good. Gonna run this. Should just print. We make this. No problem at all. Fine. We know how it works. Okay. Now let's dive into it. Let's see what string buffer is all about. What are the benefits? Its features, various methods, how it compares with string class how it compares with string builder class that we already done before. And uh, then let's, uh, let's take a look at some formatting options. And uh, you know, the, the options these classes have been pro has, have provided us, these are endless. 
Okay, so according to your use case, I'd recommend you just, you know, Google. So I'll tell you some of the basics, some of the ways by which you can get started. But you know, the possibilities are endless. So you can use regex, you can do all sorts of things. And once you're this comfortable with strings and we are on the 50, more than 50 lectures we have done, so I think you have enough confidence now to Google and, you know, explore various uh, functions and methods by yourself. But let's take a look at the string buffer class and see what it's all about. Okay, so string buffer class. We are going to use these things like when we do file handling and stuff as well. So we'll, I'll talk about file handling a little bit later into the course when we work with like, um, you know, we will we'll talk about it, don't worry. Um, so as you're working with more complex data structures. But uh, the simple idea of string buffer is that it is mutable. Mutable sequence of characters. Very simple stuff. We know that string is immutable. What that basically means is if you have, well, I've already covered this, a is equal to Kunal, I cannot change this object. Okay? If I make a change in A, it will actually create a new object. So, revise. If you watch the string lecture, you will learn about string pool, you will learn about memory heaps etc so if you're not aware of what we're talking about right now go watch the string lecture okay string buffer on the other hand is mutable okay so you can change the content without creating a new object so if i have string buffer something is equal to something then um, i can uh, create like um, you know i can edit that object without modifying it okay Let's talk about the advantages. What are the advantages? So if I talk about the advantages, here let's write down the advantages. You can create notes yourself, but I'll leave these in the description below as well. As one we already mentioned, these are mutable. So you can edit the object uh, without really creating a new object. So you can make changes in that object. We've already covered this. So I'll show you an example of that as well. So for example, if you write, you know, A is equal to Kunal and then you write A is equal to Rahul, it's actually creating a new object. So let's say this is your stack heap A object Kunal. It was pointing to Kunal first. Now I said A is equal to Rahul. So it will stop pointing to this and it will point to Rahul. Rahul is a new object being created. This is still in memory because strings are immutable. But string buffer is mutable. So if you want to change K to something else like P Punal or something, I don't know. <laughs> so you can do that with string buffer. I'll show you in just a second. Okay. Advantages. So mutable. Let me write that down clearly. Mutable, I can make changes. Number two, these are more efficient. So being more, being mutable, uh, string buffer classes are efficient because you don't have to create objects again and again. You can make changes in those objects itself. So it is efficient. Third one is thread safe. What does this mean Kunal? It is thread safe. So when we talk about thread safety in Java, let's say multiple threads are working on the same data. Okay, and the value of that data is changing. So let's say, you know what a thread is, right? A small, uh, small unit of processes. Study computer architecture if you don't know this. Um, it's very simple, threads, processes, you know, we all, we all know this, we have covered it a little bit in the past, but I'll do a separate, uh, it's advanced concept. So it is sometimes asked in Java specific interviews, so I'll talk more about it in a separate video. It requires a separate video. So for example, let's say processes, multiple threads are like processes. Let's say they are working on same data. Let's say thread one is doing some work in on this data. Thread two is also doing some work in this data. Data is same, let's say in the memory, same location everywhere. 
and there's just one object and thread one is working on that object and uh, thread two is also working on the same object and let's say the value of this data is being changed by whatever these things are doing now when thread number one let's say is already working on this data it is going to prevent any other thread to work on this data thread one is going to be like hey thread two i am working on this data please don't work with it right now let me finish first this is called thread safety in simple terms okay but if these two are like no i don't really care you are working on it and changing some data in this object i will also work and change some data in this object that is thread unsafety so string buffer is thread safe string buffer is thread safe sounds good and that also makes it a little slower because it's thread safe you know only one thread can access at one time to this object and one thing i want to mention over here is difference between string buffer and string builder string builder is not thread safe that is the difference so in short if you are working with multiple threads you need thread safety use string buffer if you are not working with multiple threads and you need it to be faster use string builder simple stuff very easy cool okay let's move forward okay one more thing i want to mention is now some of the constructors in string buffer this is constructor number 1 constructor type 1 when you're creating an object of string buffer and then we'll look into some of these methods as well but constructor number 1 is something like this you just have a simple simple constructor it just creates an empty string buffer over here and it will have an initial capacity of i'm not sure what it is you can do control click go inside it i think it's 16 like 16 capacity of the initial buffer but uh, you know because strings are what a, a, a sequence of characters so initially the 16 is the empty space that it has like okay i will have it if you keep adding more and more then it will you know double and copy and do all sorts of things similar to um array list if you watch the array list playlist similar concept one more thing is available constructor number 2 so constructor number 2 string builder 2 is when you give it a string so you can specify it the string over here kunal kushwa now it will create the string buffer object but it is going to have already a string initialized in it last one is constructor number three here you can actually specify the capacity of the empty string buffer object initially let's say it's let's say by default uh, by default it's uh, 16 i will make it 30 three types of string buffers okay cool let's take a look at some methods this is the append method so basically you can you can add stuff in it okay so whatever currently we have in string buffer it is going to add the string that i have provided over here in it and it's not going to create a new object it's going to modify that object only okay so example if i say sb dot append i say something like is nice then i run it we make devs is nice we make devs is nice it appended the same thing it did not create a new object okay cool there's another method called the insert method so basically if you want to insert something at a particular index you can do that so if i say sb dot insert at index number 2 i want to insert rahul run comma v 0 1 index number 2 it inserted my space Rahul space. We Rahul make devs is nice. Nice. Okay. Very simple. This third one, another one called replace. So you can replace the given string with a specified, like from a specified index, like beginning or the like the end index. 
so if i say that i remove this for now and let's say i say replace from which index to which index from let's say index number 1 which is e to index number 0 1 2 3 4 so 4 no 5 because this last one is not inclusive this end index is not inclusive if i write 5 here it will go till 4 only so means 1 till 4 1 2 3 4 e m a c will e m a k e m a k will be replaced by let's say kushwaha oh sorry So E M A K is replaced by Kushwaha. Pretty cool. So if you want to replace, so you can see so many methods it's providing us. There's also the delete one which can uh, delete the string from a from a specified index again. So if I say delete. From let's say index number 1 to index number 5 delete so index number 1 2 3 4 5 so KUSH will be deleted see very simple cuckoo we can also re reverse say sp dot reverse it will reverse the string reversed so these will be beneficial for you if you want to you know play around with stuff and let's say you have a lot of inputs you don't want to create new string objects again and again and again because they will be keeping there in the memory so that's why uh try not to you know uh make so many objects of strings that you're not using so one more thing you can do is if i want to check what the initial capacity is let's say string builder dot kappa city you can also use this think it should be 16 by default yeah by default is 16 okay you can change it if i print sb3 dot capacity it should give me 30 because i already specified 30 30 okay very easy stuff pretty cool so that's string buffer right let's move forward okay let's say you want to create a random string so random string dot java class random string and i want to generate a random string so how do we do that let's say i have a generate random string of this size no problem no problem at all so since i want to create a random string uh, how can i do that think about it how can we do that we get a random character every time and append that in a string if it's saying create a random string of size 5 okay i will get a random character a from the alphabet Add it in the string random character 2 added in the string random character 3 added it let me show you hold on so here let's say you're creating a random string then let's say you want to say length should be equal to 5 then what you can do is let's say you have an empty string over here empty you get a random character let's say it gives you x so you will add x in it then it gives you p you will add p in it so on and so forth but you see what is happening if you take string if you take string then str will be pointing to let's say empty in the heap and then it will point to empty plus a then it will point to empty plus a plus p something like this so these all are being wasted hence we are not going to use this we are just going to use string buffer just use string buffer 
But the real question is how can you find random elements like this? Have you heard of the conversion? We did the conversion thing, right? When we were the learning data types, how you can convert an integer into a character? We did that in the previous videos, right? So get the ASCII value, how from where it starts and stuff like that. So let's say we start from around, let's say 97 for A, we start that. And uh, if I just say, let's say, let's say int random character, let's say for example is some number 97. Then if I pass char with it, char of random character, this can be stored in a ch character. Okay, char ch. Check out the type casting conversion video. We have done this in the past. But let's say we have 97, so how do we make changes in it? You can use the random, uh, you know, java.util.random, you can import that. java.util.random and I can get some random, let's say, if this is 97, then I can add in an integer to it. How many characters do we have? 26. So, 26, I want to take a random from 26. So I can say 26 multiplied by a random float number. This will give me between 0 to 26. Very simple. Sounds good? You know what random float gives, right? Let me show you. Let's see, it's very simple. If you're not able to see, I will just zoom out. See, the little formula. I'll show you a dry run, then you'll understand. So here, if I am over here, and here if I just say import java.util.random and here I can just say print uh, random dot next float then you can see what is happening Sorry, did not create the object. So the reference, yeah. Run this. Oh, <laughs> because it's running all the files at once. So it was like, Kunal, this file has some error. That makes sense. So you can see it's giving me a random from 0 to 1. See, 0 to 1. So if I do 0.5 integer value into 26, it will give me what? 13. If it is 1, it will give me what? 1. So here basically now I can say that you get the idea, right? So now 97 plus any number from 1 to 26 or 0 to 26. Okay. So it will be that ASCII value, then it will just convert it into integer. So for example, if I show you this over here, system.out.println, I say care of 97 small a 97 plus 1 which is 98 small b so on and so forth 
ओके सो नाइन्टी सेवन प्लस एनी नंबर जीरो ट्वेंटी सिक्स लेस देन दैट एंड गेटिंग अ रैंडम कैरेक्टर ओके होप यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ वी गेटिंग रैंडम कैरेक्टर ओके स्ट्रिंग बफर स्ट्रिंग बफर इज इक्वल टू न्यू स्ट्रिंग बफर इनिशियल साइज इज द साइज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम रैंडम रैंडम इज इक्वल टू न्यू रैंडम नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम जस्ट अ सिंपल फॉर लूप आई इज इक्वल टू जीरो आई इज लेस देन साइज एन आई प्लस प्लस रैंडम कैरेक्टर इज इक्वल टू नाइंटी सेवन प्लस कन्वर्ट दिस फ्लोट इन टू एन इंटीजर रैंडम डॉट गेट फ्लोट मल्टीप्लाइड बाई ट्वेंटी सिक्स स्ट्रिंग बफर डॉट अपेंड कैरेक्टर ऑफ रैंडम कैर then i'm just going to say return string buffer dot to string make sense here i will just say int n is equal to let's say initially 20 name is equal to generate actually let's say size n रैंडम स्ट्रिंग डॉट जेनरेट Oh, not get float. It's next float. Okay, random string of size twenty. Very simple stuff. So keep debugging like this. You know, if you get stuck, no worries. Um, if you're getting stuck at stuff like this, it means you're good because you are not memorizing these things. So I'd say dive into the classes, see all the other functions and stuff and methods. But you can run it many times. It will give you a random string. of size 20 very cool and the good thing is it's not creating 20 individual objects it's making change in that one only it's the beauty of it okay sounds good one more thing i want to show you is uh removing white spaces so for example i have a string sentence is equal to something like multiple multiple spaces or something okay you want to remove these spaces okay so system dot out dot print ln sentence original sentence is this one how can we remove it so what you can do is sentence dot replace all space with 
nothing from this original sentence so many white spaces last sentence no white spaces why am i showing you these things because i want you to do a deep dive see all the methods that are available that you can perform on strings okay see all the methods that you can perform on string another one for example i can go on and on let's say you need to split something let's say string arr is equal to kunal apurv rahul snehal and i do i need to split this so string names is equal to what array dot split with space so in this string wherever there is space cut it from there then i can just print it you know how to print arrays right arrays dot to string we have covered this in the array section it should give me an array of size 4 with these four names import java dot util dot arrays hmm ah uh, arrays dot to string what <laughs> names see cool if you want to split it across comma let's say these were commas instead of spaces now like okay split it across commas not a problem not a problem okay sound good so one more thing i want to show you is rounding off sometimes this is one of the more important one sometimes people ask kunal how do you round off so this is another class called decimal format in the number like number format section let me show you okay so here you can see see we are talking about data structures and algorithms one thing i want you to realize is that so many things are available for you to work with see pro format character iterator get currency you can even say get dates and uh, is decimal separator were always shown so on and so forth according to your use cases so any course you do such like this it should not ask you to memorize all these things instead people should give you a motivation to learn from the documentation stuff that is needed to learn from the documentation if i say learn dynamic programming from documentation that's not cool i have to teach you dynamic programming then you will understand it but such things that are like formats and stuff i want to build a habit for you to learn these things from documentation so there's the object class we all know that inside that there's a format class then there's a number format class inside that there's a decimal format class very simple you all know subclasses you have learned about inheritance so decimal format new decimal format and here you pass the format let's say 0.0000 i'm going to have to import this java dot what java dot text dot decimal format not a problem this is my decimal format so i can say system dot out dot print ln decimal format dot format let's say 7.2 there we go one number here four decimal places okay if i say 7.29 let's see what will happen see it's not rounding off as such or if i write to some let's say a leading zero here not here here see 07.2999 similarly you can look for like rounding off and all these other things how simple was that very cool that's basically about it um play around with it see what all methods you need 
I've already taught you the basics and stuff, but there are endless opportunities. You can you can even do calendar. You can even do you can even write in your own language: Chinese, Hindi, you know, Spanish, Italian, French, whatever you want to do. Java supports all these languages also. You know, it has Unicode characters. So play around with it and uh, see how far you can go with the. Try to pretty print is what I say. If you want to practice, right? You know how I, when I was teaching you trees, I create a pretty print function. Like when I was doing AVL trees or whatever, I taught you how to pretty print. So try to print in CLI in a prettier way. Try to add like some boxes or just for practice. Okay. And that will give you more command over the input output. But in the end, you know, practice makes perfect. So practice and explore. And uh, we'll see how to work with large number of integers in the next video. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. This entire code you can find in the link. In the description below and also in the pinned comment you can just run click on fork and you can run it on your own system uh, in your own browser so pretty cool assignments everything all the things that we're doing um, can be found in the description below any questions let me know in the comment section below and uh, join the learning public initiative make sure you like share and comment you know usual stuff uh, and i'll see you in the next one have a great day.